There we go. All right, you've noticed that I don't have the microphone on. That's because I've got two Sundays off, kind of. But uh, I want to say thanks for uh, Bill speaking last Sunday. I know he came, I told him to bring waders when he came to speak because I said he's going to wade right into something. And it's just like, uh, I heard, you know, it's just like, it's one of those messages where it's, I've heard good things. And then, of course, there's those folks that are like, ouch, you know, kind of thing, and so there it is, so, uh, but I really appreciate that, it's tough to go into subject matters like that, and, uh, and so there, and so I appreciate that, well done, well done. So, the, today, uh, I've asked uh, Caleb to speak, uh, and rather than just a typical assignment of some issue or whatever, uh, it moved, God moved to my heart to ask him to come up and, and share the things that he's been going through. Uh, he's always pretty quiet about it, very shy, trying to avoid the, uh, uh, his wife Sarah always has to come and get us. It's like, you need to pray for my husband. <laughs> he, comes, he won't ask, which is fine. Yeah, I'm going to gladly pray for him. Uh, but uh, I wanted him to come and share just some of his his lessons and struggles that he's been going through with uh, with everything. And uh, and the reason I would ask that, especially preface even now with this, is a lot of times people will say, "Oh, I want to hear the testimony of somebody, you know, what some healing or some thing that's been done or whatever." And you know what? I, I think sometimes we need to hear the testimony of somebody who says. I'm not healed yet because we need to know because many of us were all like, well, everybody just gets miracles, right? <laughs> well, it's not always the case. Matter of fact, it's a high percentage of not the case. So what do we do? How do we live with that? How do we go through that? And so I was hoping that Caleb would be able to share some of those lessons. Yeah, yeah, you got it down. Allegedly. <laughs> but, you know, but honestly, I, I'm hoping that as he shares, because as I've shared, one of the greatest the, theological things that we can do when we're studying about God and trying to understand the Bible, trying to understand how it relates with us, the greatest thing that we can do is to say, I don't know. And that's hard because our soul often is clamoring for answers. Our friends are clamoring for answers. The, the world out there is clamoring for answers. And it's tough sometimes to say that the answer is Jesus. And they're like, well, and what else? And we'll just say, Jesus. Well, how? Trust. Believe. And that can be hard. So, Caleb, on that note, I, I want you to come up and share. Share what the Lord's been doing. And you're not allowed to run away too fast, okay? <laughs> I'm simply not that important. <laughs> <laughs> I do not think. You just 
can't hear you back there. Though. We can't. Oh, you can't. No, some of them. No. What? Oh, maybe it's it. Is that better? Oh, that's one. So as some of you know, I've had some, some medical challenges um, starting, what, last year? Mm -hmm. um, and it's been mysterious. I've had a, a, lot of, a lot of pain going on. Sometimes I just don't want to hear drop me to the ground. Uh, a lot of pain. Uh, I've lost close to 50 pounds, which is a lot of weight to lose unexpectedly. It's, it's a lot of weight to lose expectedly, actually, <laughs> when you're trying to. When you're trying not to, it's weird. And uh, some days it's, you know, I just gotta have absolutely no energy at all. It's hard to even get out of bed. So I've been out of work for a long time, a few months. Um, and it's, it's been a daily struggle. I don't know what to expect when I wake up morning. And I've been through multiple tests and doctors, and I think I've seen probably a dozen doctors by now, and they are a little bit. They still have it. They, they prescribed one thing for me that they thought, well, oh, you're asking yeah, for my help. Didn't it? <laughs> but the Lord, but God, but God, has been there the whole time. And so that's why Robert wanted to get up here. It's not about the issues. And, and that's part of it, actually. Because so at first, it's easy to focus on the problem. You can look here, that good helps me. A little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Trying to let me know. It's time to take a drink. At first, it's frustrating. That initial thing is frustrating. Why are the answers? Why don't I have some kind of information? Why can none of these experts figure anything out? They didn't pay enough, for goodness sakes. They're never partially educated. I mean, well, I should be able to find the answer, right? Um, and somebody I heard recently, a pastor, talking about um, Jericho. And those guys. Where did they have their faith? Did they have the faith in the wall and the God that was telling them to march around it? Yeah. Oh, so faith um, and, and lately, the, it's come down to focus for me. That's been my key word. That's been my word of the year, I think, is focus. It might be longer term than that. Because it's, it's come down to that one thing. Um, Robbie asked, well, how have you stayed uh, encouraged Throughout, and, and it's all come down to focus. One of the lines from a song is, when your eyes are on the storm, you wonder if I love you still. When your eyes are on the cross, you know I always have it, and I always will. And the more I read, um, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. We, we all know the verses. You, you have, let's see you. Well, there was a catch to this. Uh, a little phrase that I see on calendars a lot of the time. It just came to mind a while back and I forgot. It'll come back, I'm sure. But we hear all those, those sayings like, trust God, uh, when your problems are big, or remind your problems how big your God is, and stuff like that. And, and, and those are cute sayings, and they're, they're easy to remember, but they're hard to live out. And when it's a matter of focus, so you, you, you tell your problems how big your God is. It's all well and good, but it's it's more a matter of focus. At least it's been for me. Because if you focus on the problems and if your problems are your focus, if you focus on the Lord, then the problems don't necessarily go away, but they come into perspective. Um, it's almost like if you if you, if you're using binoculars or something, you got, you got a dial in one eye before you adjust the other eye. You gotta get things in perspective before you can look at the other stuff. And all the other stuff makes a lot more sense. But Robbie was talking recently about there's there's an influence, there's a spiritual realm influencing everything around us, all reality. And so when you take a step back and, and you see the focus is on the Lord, and you recognize that there's there's influences going back on, it makes way more sense. Okay, well no wonder there's agendas out there in the world. No wonder the social stuff is going on. There is an influence. There's stuff behind it. And I found myself wanting to focus on that stuff. Because <laughs> it's cool, right? The, the covers on Frank Peretti's books are great. I don't know about the books. I read half of one, and it was okay. Yeah, he was a good author. But the covers were amazing. Those were cool. Piercing the darkness and this present darkness. It's, 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 
what city scene with this perfect angel in the background. It's cool to think about that. Anything's going on at night, you know, it's fourth dimension just beyond what we can see in the spiritual realm. That's a fun thing to focus on, but it's still not a good thing to focus on. At least for me, it's a distraction. The end of love is a distraction. It'll get you to kind of uh, drift, I think. Is that the word? Drift. Um, Dale Carnegie, was it? Dale Carnegie did a book. He wrote a book. It was all of that. It was conversations with the devil. Is that right? Something like that. But it was it was published posthumously because he didn't. He knew it was going to cause an uproar. In fact, his wife wasn't going to publish it. It was interactions with the devil, kind of screw tape letters style, and the devil talking about how he doesn't need to really make himself all that known. He just needs to get people to drift. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit off course. That's all he needs. And we've noticed that in our house abundantly. But just like when when somebody's learning about banking and currency and and becoming an expert at counterfeit money, they don't hand them counterfeit money. They hand them real money, and they hand them enough of the real cash, constantly enough, consistently enough, that they get used to it. And then when the counterfeit shows up, they're like. Psh- that's not real. What is that? That's, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. It doesn't smell right. That's, there's nothing right about that. So by immersing in the focus of, of the Lord, understanding His reality, that's where my encouragement, my peace is coming from. I've been totally at peace. Uh, maybe I'm just naive. Sarah's not totally at peace. But you didn't have Jesus home at peace with him. No. Everybody has. <laughs> He's not a curable. Come on. There's still no home in the world. But he's a guy that's got it all figured out. And ultimately, he's the only one that I can focus on that I can actually count on. I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe there's nothing wrong with me. Maybe it's all in my head. I don't know. <laughs> but I know Jesus got it figured out, right? In fact, I know he's coming back on a, a horse. He's going to be dressed in a robe. He's going to love it. He's giving you business. And he's going to take care of things. And I know that. I know that. I have confidence in that. And you were talking once, once upon a time about God's plan. It sounds really, sounds really fun to be part of God's plan. I want to be part of God's plan. Well, maybe I'm the part of God's plan that I... I'm not paying enough attention, and I'm the gray stain on the pavement from the truck that just ran over me. And that somehow led to the truck driver's salvation. I don't know. Maybe I'm not part of God's plan. But see, there's a thing that changes once you get adopted into the family. In a way, you're expendable, right? Because it's only a transition. We're, you know, we're here for a while, we're here for a mission, and we've got to try to find as many people as we can, and then when we're done, we're done. And then and we're up there. It's not like we get shorted or, or skimped out or something. The absence of body is being present with the Lord. That's cool. I'm actually surprised that doesn't lead to more suicide. But God's got that built in. God, God has a contingency plan. Like, oh, oh, we don't know. Self-preservation will put that in there. <laughs> They'll keep you free at least for your 80 years or whatever. God is really good, though. That's super good. And the more I focused on him, the more the, the problems don't necessarily solve themselves, but it's obvious how what the solution is. Like, oh well, here's how to fix it. God already there's a manual, there's a book, there's an instruction book. Just like in your car, you're supposed to put what 30 weight oil in it or something, right? You put 80 weight ear oil in it, it's not gonna it's not gonna go well. <laughs> That's it's oil, right? No, no, it's not the same. It's not the same thing. And that book is for you. Keep your eyes focused on the Lord. Don't worry about don't worry about the things of tomorrow. Now he doesn't say don't plan for them. I, I get that. Don't just totally ignore it. Because if you live like the day was your last, if everybody lived like that, no one would ever do laundry. Because <laughs> who's going to do laundry on their last day of on earth, right? But, but the 
2000 realm, a lot of people were like, oh, oh yeah, it's going to be the end, and these big speakers are coming around, oh yeah, it's going to be the end of the world, or uh, this and that, and you got to do the, go and live it up, and, but they were still booking, they were still booking meetings after they said the world was going to end. <laughs> you know, that's a lack of confidence. <laughs> World's gonna end, but just in case it's not, we're gonna be appearing next week. <laughs> I don't know if Charlie could bring up a video in the background. He can tell me to do it since he's not having a PowerPoint. Oh, sorry, guys. I don't have an outline either, so if you wanna write notes, may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> Try to pull up a video of one time blind with a red balloon. Or not the red one, the, uh, the, the ring. She's holding an umbrella. I think you can find that. We'll come back to it. Robbie told me it about 30 minutes, and I thought, well, I could try to do it twice. And... <laughs> So forgive me, guys. This is not my strength. I said I'm not. Robin said I'm not looking for anything theological or any teaching. I said that's what I want to do. <laughs> Not a lot of encouragement from people, for sure. The people at this this church family. This is a good family, guys. And you all know that, I'm sure, but. This is a good family. And I've been in a quandary because sometimes I pray for our church to grow. And sometimes I pray for it to stay just the same size it is. Because I don't know where the magic size is. I've been in big churches where you get lost and nobody knows who you are. That's the kind of church where people know what's going on with everybody. And it's awesome. And that's becoming fewer and further between, I think. I don't get out of the Can you happen to find that video? Something's up there. Yeah. I play this one once in a while. I think about this one every once in a while.
she would expect to throw the stick. So it didn't matter if it was a stick, it could be a, a stick, a branch, a rock, a slug, it didn't matter. You throw it, she'd go get it. And the look that dog had when I pick up a stick, the intensity, she's just looking like, oh, I know you're going to throw that stick. I know it. I know it. And I just, any sudden movement, I'd be like, oh. <laughs> just wait, just on bated breath. Just, and she'd be tensed up. She'd just, just be staring intently. Wait. <laughs> that's, that, that's kind of the impression I get. I know that's not all of it. It's not all kind of the same. But people think of waiting on the Lord so you just can't lounge out on the couch and think, oh, the Lord show up eventually, whatever. That, that's, I don't get that impression from the Bible saying wait on the Lord. You can get strength from waiting on the Lord. And I noticed that in my lab a lot. She looked like she had all the energy she needed waiting on her. But that intensity, I know something's going to happen. I know it. I know that something's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. There's no lack of encouragement in that black lab at all. She was excited. She was ready to go. Because she knew something was going to happen. And you know, if you put the stick down, I mean, she, she'd probably pick it up and like, try to shove it in her hand. But if you had to go, if you didn't throw the stick, it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. The next time you picked up the stick, right there, get down. Throw the stick. Remember, the same lab the same lab, my dad would follow a fairly similar routine every morning. He was a creature of habit. You know that deal. My dad's a creature of habit. So he'd make himself some toast in the morning before he'd leave. And sometimes he'd put a little jam on it, sometimes he wouldn't. He liked burnt toast, which is just bizarre. <laughs> but one morning he had some toast that he hadn't eaten. And he got home from work in the afternoon, and here his toast was still sitting in the, in the cup holder in his truck. His toast had been sitting there all day. And he rolled in, and here's this old black lad laying there in the, in the yard. Okay. He tosses the toast out on the ground, and she sniffs it, and rolls it down in one bite like labs do. From that day forward, without fail, Every afternoon he rolled in from work. She was there at his door, anxiously awaiting another terrible, horrible, all day long, dried up piece of toast, which she never got. She never got another piece of toast ever again. That was the only time. That, until the day she died, she anxiously awaited toast, just knowing for sure she was going to get some toast. It's interesting. I'm not going to pattern my life out of the responses of the black lab. But every little thing counts. You can learn lessons from all sorts of stuff. You know? And the other, the other little story that came to mind was about the donkey. It's an old donkey on the farm. And he had fallen in a well. I'm sure some of you probably heard this story. This old donkey fell in a well. The farmer said, well, that's going to be terrible trying to get that old donkey out of that well. It's an old well, we've been meaning to fill it in anyway. So sorry for the donkey, let's just fill in the well. And we'll cure two problems at the same time. So they got a couple of his farm hands, they started shoveling the dirt into the well. Pretty soon, the donkey's getting a little panicked, right? Because he's getting buried in this well. And then he, he takes a different approach. Instead of panicking and getting himself all buried and all stuck in the in the ground, every time they shovel dirt in there, he'd shake it off and step up. And it's despite how often they were throwing junk on there, he'd just shake it off and step up. And pretty soon he shook it off and stepped up and stepped over the edge of the well and walked away. I don't know how helpful it is, but it's a cute story. <laughs> One more time, okay. <laughs> is this helpful at all? Is this at all helpful? Okay. Yeah. One of the ways, one of the ways that we can continue to encourage you. Continue to encourage me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just care how much space we've been doing. You guys haven't had to work very hard. You guys are all awesome. 
respond to my wife's demands for parenting, yeah. <laughs> I think her and I, we've grown in our relationship tremendously. And, and there again, we've learned it all. Um, anybody that's talked to Pastor Robbie about relationships knows about the triangle. You go closer to God, you go closer to each other. That's, that's automatic. And it's fun to talk about, but what you're living it out, of course. That is easy. This too shall pass. <laughs> Tons of them. Pick one. Because this is not my home. This is, I've never been in the military. I don't know what it's like. I don't have a clue. So I, I can't make that connection very well personally. But just from my, what I've built up in my brain, <laughs> it's, you're on assignment and you do, you do the job. You get your arm blown off or something. Well, sorry, but you gotta go in there and do the job. That's probably following my eyes a bit. I'm probably not quite that glamorous. <coughs> but I get the same thing for here. I mean, we're we're part of a kingdom. It changed my perspective on like you were talking about last last week. Like, How dare they? I'm an American. Well, yeah, but are we? Because we we have a higher citizenship now. We've been adopted into a kingdom. We're not, we're not American too. We may be staying here temporarily, but we're going to a bigger kingdom. Much bigger kingdom. Okay, that's going to fly 5,000 mile city of gold out of the sky. Yes. There's bigger things involved here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> much, much bigger things. And so that level of perspective, that helps too. It's like, okay, well, I gotta go through this, and it's just part of the assignment. And then when the assignment's done, you never won. I mean, I'm not gonna have a crown case, I don't think, in my in my place. It's, they're not all on display because they all go back to the cross. So that's the only reason I had any of them in the first place. Matthew 6 is a, is a chapter that's encouraged me a lot, a lot of years. Where it talks about don't worry and, and stuff like that. But earlier on in the chapter it, it says uh, where, your heart, where your heart will be. I just read this earlier and it, and it struck me again. Do not lay up for yourself treasure on earth, but where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And it says, The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Then the light means it's darkness. How great is that darkness? And I, I get thinking about that verse a little bit more. I've read that many, many times. It struck me differently this time. The eye is not a, a output item. That's that's input. Because the eye is the lamp of the body. And I may be wrong on this, so correct me please, please if I'm wrong, but if the eye is the lamp, is it shining outward for all to see? Maybe, maybe a little, you can see a lot by looking at somebody's eyes, but if they, eyes don't shine, if your eyes are glowing, that's a distraction. That's, especially if they're glowing red, then they run, mm -hmm. run away quickly. So I'm wondering, I'm just wondering, the eyes, the eyes are the lamp of the body. It's within. So your eyes, what you're focused on, is going to be what what brings that light within. Let's talk about where where your where your treasure is. Where that's where your heart will be. And then it talks about the eyes. To me, it's all talk about focus. It's all about focus. No one can serve two masters. It's focus. And then he follows that up immediately. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. 
Don't worry. Am I going to get things under control better than he's got it? I doubt it. I've tried to take over control several times and it turned out pretty disastrous. So. Did I miss it? So, you've been out of work for like over a year, and your wife is working part-time, yeah. very part-time, right? Mm -hmm. So, how has the Lord been providing for, for your family? That's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. I All I know is there seems to be more available than there should be. Amen. It's like a 5 plus 2 is 12 kind of situation, and I'm like, Trust in the guy that created reality that he's got things taken care of. Hang on, Pastor Robbie's got to fill in the gaps because I left some stuff out. Let's pray. No, but it was. <laughs> his attention and his focus and I just pray Father that uh, as his eyes stay on you Father that you would just continue to lead and guide him in this time Father of course we pray for healing and I know that he and his family pray for healing uh, Lord we don't know if that's in, in your plan and what you want to do his life, but it doesn't hurt to ask, and so Lord, we do pray that you would uh, bring healing, or uh, Father, uh, bring what answers you can to help him uh, understand, and Father, if you do not do that, then I pray that you would continue to give him strength, and Sarah strength, and Tristan strength to trust you when there are no answers, there is no healing. And Lord, I pray that you would give him strength to continue to put one foot in front of the other until you take him home. Because Lord, that's what we all need. So Lord, I thank you for his testimony. Thank you, Lord, for the testimony that you're still building and working on. 
Lord, I just pray that we as a body can continue to just love on them and care for them. And help us grow, Lord, in maturity and understanding and our own trust and walk with you. And I just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, brother. <coughs> You know, the pastor I've been talking about a lot on Daniel. Daniel got all worried. Like, What's going on? God, look. Grab his face. Look, God, look. And God's like, I can't look at the big picture. Daniel was focused on probably the rightly so. But God's response was, no, look. Look what really is. Look what really is. That goes right along with your lesson last week. So easy to get distracted. Yes. Yeah. We've got to keep our eyes on the big picture all the time. So easy to get distracted. And so, Father God, I just thank you for this morning. Thank you for my brother Sherry. Lord, we know that you are a big God. We know that you have a plan. Lord, uh, always, though, usually we want it our way. And we want to give you the our idea, itinerary of our life. And you're like, no, that trip is not the trip you want to go on. I want to give you the trip that leads to growth, to lead to understanding. I always love... Uh, don't know if you quote, talked about C.S. Lewis, but C.S. Lewis's life, uh, there's been made into a couple movies as far as uh, the one called The Shadowlands. And it was his relationship with Joy Davidson, an American that uh, he got to know. And he was being from England. And uh, he only got to know her for a little while because she got cancer. And, of course, he's praying for her healing, praying for everything to go right. And it's not. And his friend asked him, well, what are you doing praying? Is God getting any closer to you? <laughs> and he said, as I pray... It's me getting closer to God because he's right there. That is powerful, powerful understanding. So, Father God, we just want to be closer to you. And we just ask that very simply. By the one who draws us in closer to you, your son, Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We say amen. amen. Let's praise this God. Mm -hmm.